children are affected, adults are affected, animals are affected, everyone is affected. At least three million are almost affected by the directly to these uh, discharges on the both east and west coast. And uh, it, it, we just have to come into the new, the new century. An algae crisis threatening our treasure coast. A cycle of despair and disgust amidst promises made and broken. Billions of gallons of water are rushing from Lake Okeechobee to our coastline. How much pollution is too much? How much danger is too much? How much before this will stop? Over many decades, really since the 1920s, uh, this river has been used as a sewer outlet for Lake Okeechobee. And in the old days, when I was a girl growing up here, it was like being in the Bahamas. That is not the case any longer. Our economy is falling apart and our ecology has fallen apart and this has to stop now. We've seen in years past the federal government dumping toxins on us that are 60 times more toxic than what the EPA has said human beings should come in contact with. This is criminal action. It's often been compared to guacamole-like substance sitting on top of or within the water. It's so thick that birds can walk on top of it. We often equate it to like a wildfire going underneath of the water, just killing off every bit of sea life in its path as it moves through our waterways. The Corps of Engineers has labeled this toxic. When we're talking about that, we're talking about the microsystems that have measured 400 plus parts per billion. When the EPA has come out and said you should not come in contact with parts per billion greater than eight. For years, the federal government has been playing this game where they pretend to be naive about the damage that they're causing, the, the poisons, the hazards, the toxins that they're sending into communities. You'll get people from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers that'll say, well, listen, we're not scientists. I can't answer that question. You gotta go over here and talk to that agency. And that agency will tell you, well, listen, we can't answer that question. You gotta go talk to the EPA. And they'll tell you, no, you gotta go talk to this agency. The time for that has come to an end. We've been fighting this year after year after year, getting sent on these wild goose chases by federal agencies, just as my predecessors have received as well. As a result, I've introduced the South Florida Clean Coastal Waters Act, which demands not just that the federal government study these toxic algal blooms getting dunked out of Lake Okeechobee, but it actually demands that they come up with an action plan to bring that to an end. The Everglades region has never had a report or an action plan of this magnitude specifically on the harmful, not just harmful, toxic algal blooms that are getting dumped out of Lake Okeechobee into these communities. We've been doing this since the 1940s. There is a, a sense of optimism. It gives you energy and the ability to do a better job than you're already doing. When you talk about the Corps of Engineers acknowledging that they have knowingly discharged, quote, toxic water without so much as telling any members of the community the hazards related to those toxins that they're sending out into communities where children, uh, men, women, children, sea life, everything are out there just enjoying the water, that to me is criminal. They might want to send water out of Lake Okeechobee, but if they have to do it by poisoning somebody else, then we let them know that that is a bridge too far. Every single place that we can find somewhere to fight the Corps of Engineers on this, to fight the federal government on dumping toxic waters out of Lake Okeechobee into our estuary here, we're out there working on that front.